All right, I'm going to attempt to show you all the elements necessary to get a DJ set set up inside Unreal, complete with DMX lighting, resolving video feed input. I'll show you how to set up a webcam feed with green screen chroma screaming and make that into a blueprint that follows the camera to maintain visibility. I'll show you how to map your resolving video feed to simple geometry and blender using UV mapping. I'll lastly show you how to use DMX signals to influence colors or anything else in Resolume. This tutorial assumes you have some background in lighting design in DMX as well as Resolume if you intend to use those elements. You may need some, all, or only one part of this. I hope you find what you're looking for. Going to start pretty quick. Start a new project and call it what you like. Settings don't matter too much. Click edit and then plugins. Search DMX and click the DMX plugin and DMX fixtures. Go ahead, let's start Unreal. Close Unreal and install the NDI SDK if you haven't already. After that, you need to install the NDI plugin directly to your project if you're using 4.26. You can download the 4.25 version of NDI and copy the plugins folder directly into your project. I'm copying it from a last project, but the plugin is unmodified. After that, open your project. You think you should recompile and you're good to go. That's it for the required setup. Plugin setup. Back in our project, we'll make a folder called DMX. Uh, make a DMX library. I usually call mine DMX 512, 512 uh, universes. Make a controller real quick. You can come back and update the details when you'd like. I'm going to show you how to manually create a fixture in your DMX library that corresponds to a real world fixture. In my case, it's Chave Gig Bar 2. If you have any other DMX controlled light that you know the DMX functions, you can similarly map them inside Unreal. Use your DMX documentation and the drop down menu to match up your light functions to those available in Unreal. In my case, I'm only mapping my power lights. They have red, green, blue, and dimmer inputs that we assign and a UV channel that we ignore. Unfortunately, there isn't a good derby fixture to my knowledge yet, and the strobe and laser plugins seem aimed at a more professional equipment. My light is more of a party DJ light, so it's not too crazy that I'm not able to map every little thing, but more professional lighting should have less trouble. Map out the rest of my gig bar with empty data, fill out my DX library, DMX library correctly. Reason I add even the lights that I don't need is so that my DMX library in Unreal will match up with my library and sound switch or whatever software you're using. I'll start a new venue in sound switch and add my single gig bar to my library. You can program your own library in GrandMod. Dot to QLC or anywhere else DMX signals are generated or obviously you would add your own fixtures rather than my own uh, the main thing is that you want your DMX libraries to match <laughs> Before I start, I'd like to say that if you're already outputting ArtNet from a program or console to an IP address successfully that you know, and you can select an Unreal Engine, then skip this section. This is showing my highly specific setup that is a result of me wanting Resolume to hear itself, as well as being able to send along to DMX signals to Unreal. If you want to just use Resolume without the influence of DMX variables from another program, you can skip the QLC Plus portion of this and just select your main networking interface in Resolume and catch it straight from Unreal. If this section is too confusing, don't get discouraged. There are much simpler setups available, this is just mine. All that matters is that you get your ArtNet from your program into Unreal. So let's break it down. I make sure I'm connected to both my wireless network as well as my wired one. My wired IP is 192.168.11.189. Uh, my wireless is .194. And I set my resolume to the local host, which will show up in sound switch is 127.0.0.1. Then in QLC, I create two universes. I set the inputs and outputs both to my wireless IP. I go into configure them. Now, for whatever reason, QLC uh, will say it's forwarding universe zero on dot one nine four for you but in reality from my observations it's just acting as a conduit dot one nine four is sending universes zero and one on zero and one and there's nothing you can do to change it you can tell because if you try to forward from zero to zero you can see it interrupting itself but if you set it to th three things are fine our second universe is set to listen on universe two dodging zero and one that sound switch is using for resolume so that we can see so th so that we can use pixel mapping effects to generate more DMX signals based on our visuals within Resolume. 
We'll go to advanced mapping and create a Lumaverse, which could, should auto-add a default fixture for you. Set your target IP to broadcast in your universe to 2, and that should kick things from Resolium to QLC+, and send to Unreal, where I set my IP to my wireless IP address. Those junk data lanes are probably avoidable, but I'm not maxing out my universes, so if I have to sacrifice a few lanes for my sloppy code, so be it. Uh, Jump back into our project and open DMX Fixtures Content Folder. Enable Show Engine Content and Show Plugin Content to see if you can't. Open the Light Fixture Folder and make duplicates of whatever fixture you, want, you intend to use. In this case, the static and the moving head. You can use the base templates, but if you edit something wrong, there's no reverting back. So I've been encouraged to always make a copy. Here we'll duplicate the uh, static light and moving head and move them to a folder within our project. From there, drag out a static light and assign it to the value from our par from earlier. Uh, duplicate the first light into a second that we assigned to par 2. I forgot to set my incoming universe start to zero, so I do that here quickly. Press play and sound switch in Unreal, and boom! DMX lights in Unreal that match your real world fixtures. I also set the default value for zoom to 20 to give my lights a little more breadth. I'm going to use a Sharpie just like all the other DMX tutorials because it has a GDTF profile. Download that from the GDTF site and just drag it into your project. It's like a package version of the fixture we created earlier with everything pre-configured and all you have to do is select the correct mode. There aren't profiles for every light out there but the ones that are out there uh, work well enough. Create a new fixture in the DMX library and select the GDTF pro you imported earlier. Now hop over into your lighting software and add as many Sharpies as you'd like there. If you're using Sound Switch, it can be helpful to add them to a group for chases, etc. Back in Unreal, you'll mirror your library setup, adding the same number of Sharpies. At this point, I'm going to grab the DMX Setter tool from the DMX tool project that I'll link to below. Just migrate it forward and run it and run it. Drag out a Sharpie and duplicate it eight times, then select all eight of them in your DMX setter tool, select your library and, and starting fixture, and address incremental. This should assign all your DMX channels correctly. Hop over to Sound Switch and play a song to make sure signals are coming through. If you're in Sound Switch, you can set your positions now to get some positions programmed into your light show. You can have Unreal side by side with your light so lighting software to adjust positions and other attributes. Well, that should get you started. Uh, make a new DMI, DNI folder if you want. Create a new DNI meter or server and inside of it create a new video texture. Maybe name it something you can remember. Create a texture from that and then make a new ble blueprint that we're going to use to activate the NDI feed. You can add an NDI receiver component and compile. Uh, then set that component's NDI media source to one, the one that you created. Drag that one out with a get and from that drag off to a start receiver module. Drag it back off of that and search find and click find network source by name. If you're using Resolume, you can find your URL by looking in the DMX section of preferences. Your host name will be the first part of your URL, followed by the title of the screen you want to grab in parentheses. Compile your blueprint and drag it to your level. Then drag your texture you created into any mesh you'd like. Press play and watch your video pass through. Alright. Now hop into Blender and go straight to edit mode. It's probably a better way to make a pyramid, but this is how I do it. I delete all the vertices one at the top of my cube, then I use F to make faces between the remaining vertices. After that, I enter the remaining point on 0, 0, and adjust the Z position to my liking. On my previous set, I would used an orthographic view to stage my projection, and while it worked, the sweet spot for all the screens lining up was crazy far away and not ideal. Instead, here I am going... Instead, here I'm going to move our main camera straight in front of our scene and tilt it up to look at our set head on. I'm going to be using cam this camera angle to map my Resolium video feed to my textures. So put the camera where you expect the sweet spot for your screens to line up to be. I'm going to duplicate my pyramid a few times and out of box to fill out some spaces. You can do whatever shapes you want. They can all be rectangles like traditional screens. I'm showing you how to do what I did, but you can apply the same principles to a more traditional stage set with flat screens if you want. Once you've got our scene sketched out, you'll create a simple single color material and assign it to all our meshes. This isn't a Blender specific tutorial, so if you're having trouble, just YouTube keywords I'm saying. I only know the absolute fundamentals of Blender. Take a 
Next, take a screenshot of your camera angle into the favorite image editing program. Take another image that's the same or make another image that's the same resolution as your expected resolume composition and copy over the area covering all your screens. Stretch resize it to fill as much as your 720 screen as possible. Next, add up and right arrows to my textures to help keep things aligned or oriented. I use black arrows here, but I would have but I would recommend two colors as things can still get confusing because the arrows look the same. First, you're going to make a new texture with the image we just made. Click on object and create a new material. Then open the shader editor. Add an image texture and select your image you created. And plug it into your color slot. Then assign this to your mesh. Switch into edit mode and then face select at mode. Select your first face you would like to map and open the UV editing tab in Blender. You'll see a representation of the selected polygon on the left side overlaid on your image you created earlier. Your job is to use selecting to, or your job is to use clicking to select and G to grab to move the different parts to where they match on the image. Check the shaded version of your scene on the right view, uh, on the right viewport to make sure things are correct. You may have to rotate or mirror things to get your images to match up, and that's what the arrows are for. To do this with each of your objects and each side of each object if you're going for a symmetrical kaleidoscope over 3D effect. As I know many of you are. You can see I don't even get the right pyramid correct, and I only bother to do all the sides of the main pyramid. But it gives you an idea of what to do, as well as showing you what your texture will look like without any UV texture, any UV mapping. Resolume is super flexible in its mapping of DMX, amongst other things but found that adding a simple add effect to a single row and linking it to the DMX channel associated with red, green, and blue for one of my lights will let me keep the general color of my video feed in line with that of the lights. In my case, those values are channels one, two, and three for the RGB values of my first part. Although problematic, when there are many colors at once, the light shows generated by sound switch generally stick to a few colors at a time. So this is an easy way to get things aligned color-wise. Once you've got your values set, play a light show and jump into Unreal to see the effect in action. You can see that my colors are out of line because I accidentally mixed up my green and blue in the very first step. But once fixed, you can see the video keep pace with the lights. Finally, create a new folder for your camera feed. Create a new media player and in it open your webcam or expected video feed. Copy the URL for later. Hop in your level blueprint and add a new variable. Change the type to media player and compile. Drag out with a get. Set the default value to the media player you created. Drag from that and create an open URL node. Paste, from, paste your URL from your video feed from earlier and connect it to your event begin play. Make a texture from your video texture and drag that onto whatever you want to see if it works. See again the bad UV mapping on the right pyramid from earlier. And your video feed material, change your blend mode to masked and your shading model to unlit. Drag off your main texture and search MF chroma key. Plug in your emissive and opacity. Don't be tempted to plug a color into your input UV. That's not how it works. Instead, make a material instance of your material. Open it and use the parameters to configure your green screen color as well as other settings.
settings for a while trying to get something to look okay, but it wasn't until I turned on my auxiliary lighting that I used for filming that I was able to get anything resembling clean. So, as in any green screen project, lighting is important. Now make a new blueprint and add a simple plane to it and rotate it to face the camera. In the event graph, get your player character and cast to your player camera manager. Get the location of the camera, then make a separate get actor location with the target set to self. Subtract the first from the second and get the rotation from the X vector and set it to your rotation. Whatever that means, change the texture of the plane to your video feed. Throw your BP into the level to try it out. You can see that it's trying to avoid being seen rather than the expected behavior. So we rotate the plane negative 90 degrees on the Z axis and whammo, can't stop staring at you. I like to break the axis and only use the X and Y rotation, but your mileage may vary. Well, hope that gets you started. Should have done a segment on the LED panel fixture since I finally figured out how to get my pixel mapping working in Resolume. But this tutorial has already run long and I can't keep moving my goalpost. Hoping this has been, helped you get started. Obviously, you're not left with a finished set to start DJing on, but this isn't one of those kinds of tutorials. More of a principles and ideas tutorial to get you started on implementing elements you might see in other people's Unreal sets. If you want to tell me I'm doing something wrong, first of all, I know. But secondly, tell me how to do it right. I'm new to much of this, and advice on cleaning up my workflow is appreciated. Best of luck.